Ernst Thalmann, the 16th of April 1886 to the 18th of August 1944, was the leader of the Communist Party of Germany (KPD) during much of the Weimar Republic. He was arrested by the Gestapo in 1933 and held in solitary confinement for 11 years before being shot in Buchenwald on Adolf Hitler's personal orders in 1944. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Family and early years. Ernst Thalmann's father was Johannes Thalmann called Jan, the 11th of April 1857 to the 31st of October 1933, born in Wedern in Holstein, working there as a farmworker. Thalmann's mother, Mary Magdalene the 8th of November 1857 to the 9th of March 1927, was born in Kirchwerder. The wedding took place in 1884 in Hamburg. There, Johannes Thalmann earned his first money as a coachman. Ernst's parents had no party affiliation, in contrast to his father, his mother was deeply religious. Ernst Thalmann was born in Hamburg. After his birth, his parents took a pub near the port of Hamburg. On 4 April 1887, his sister Frieda was born died 8 July 1967 Hamburg. In March 1892, Thalmann's parents were convicted and sentenced to two years in prison, because they had bought stolen goods or had taken them for debt payment. Thalmann and his younger sister Frida were separated and placed for care in different families. Thalmann's parents were released early, his mother in May, and his father in October 1893. His parents' offense would be used 36 years later in the campaign against Ernst Thalmann. From 1893 to 1900, Thalmann attended elementary school. He later described history, natural history, folklore, mathematics, gymnastics and sports as his favorite subjects. However, he did not like religion. In the mid-1890s, his parents opened a vegetable, coal and wagon shop in Eilbeck, a suburb of Hamburg. In this business, he had to help after school. Thalman did his schoolwork in the morning before classes started. Despite this burden, Thalman was a good student who enjoyed learning. His desire to become a teacher or to learn a trade was not fulfilled because his parents refused to give him the necessary money. He had to continue working in his parents' business, causing much sorrow and conflict with his parents. Therefore, he sought a job as an unskilled worker in the port. Here the 10-year-old Thalman came in contact with the port workers on strike from November 1896 till February 1897, the bitter labor dispute known as the Hamburg Dockworkers Strike 1896-97. Leaving home, World War I At the beginning of 1902, he left home. He first he lived in an emergency shelter, later in a basement apartment, and in 1904 he was fireman on the steam engine freight ship America which also traveled to the USA. He was a Social Democratic Party member during 1903. On 1 February 1904, he joined the Central Union of Trade, Transport and Traffic Workers of Germany and ascended to the chairman of the Department Carters. In 1913, he supported a call of Rosa Luxemburg for a mass strike as a means of action of the SPD to enforce political demands. From 1913 to 1914, he worked for a laundry as a coachman. In January 1915, one day before he was called up for military service in World War I, he married Rosa Koch. At the beginning of 1915, he was posted to the artillery on the Western Front, where he stayed till the end of the war, wounded twice. He said that he participated in the following battles, Battle of Champagne 1915-1916, Battle of the Somme 1916, Second Battle of the Aisne, Battle of Soissons, Battle of Cambrai 1917-1917 and Battle of Arras 1917. Thalman received several awards. Iron Cross Second Class Hanseatic Cross Wound badge towards the end of 1917, he became a member of the Independent Social Democratic Party of Germany USPD. In October 1918, Thalmann deserted together with four fellow soldiers. He did not return from home to the front. On the day of the German Revolution, 9 November 1918, he wrote in his diary on the Western Front, Dot did a bunk from the front with four comrades at two o'clock. Kommunistische Partei Deutschlands KPD. 
In Hamburg, he participated in the construction of Hamburg workers and soldiers. From March 1919, he was chairman of the USPD in Hamburg and a member of the Hamburg Parliament. At the same time he worked as relief worker in the Hamburg City Park, then he found a well-paying job at the employment office. He rose to inspector. When the USPD split over the question whether to join the Communist International Comintern, Thalmann sided with the pro-communist faction which in November 1920 merged with the KPD. In December Thalmann was elected to the Central Committee of the KPD. In March 1921 he was fired from his job at the employment office due to his political activities. That summer Thalmann went as a representative of the KPD to the Third Congress of the Comintern in Moscow and met Vladimir Lenin. In June 1922, Thalmann survived an assassination attempt at his flat. Terrorists from the ultranationalist group Organization Consul threw a hand grenade into his ground floor flat. His wife and daughter were unhurt. Thalmann himself came home only later. Thalmann participated in and helped to organize the Hamburg Uprising of October 1923. The uprising failed, and Thalmann went to underground for some time. After the death of Lenin in January 1924, Thalmann visited Moscow and for some time maintained a guard of honor at his beer. From February 1924 he was deputy chairman of the KPD and, from May, a Reichstag member. At the 5th Congress of the Comintern that summer he was elected to the Comintern Executive Committee and a short time later to its steering committee. In February 1925 he became chairman of the Rote Frontkampfverband RFB, the defense organization of the KPD. In October 1925 Thalmann became chairman of the KPD and that year was a candidate for the German presidency. Thalmann's candidacy in the second round of the presidential election split the center-left vote and ensured that the conservative Paul von Hindenburg defeated the center party's Wilhelm Marx. In October 1926 Thalmann supported in person the Dockers' strike in his hometown of Hamburg. He saw this as solidarity with the British miners' strike which had started on 1 May and had been profitable for Hamburg docks as an alternative supplier of coal. Thalmann's argument was that this strike breaking in Hamburg had to be stopped. In March, he took part in a demonstration in Berlin, where he was injured by a blow from a sword. In 1928 during the Witterf affair he was ousted from the party central committee for trying to cover up embezzlement by a party official who was his close friend and protégé, John Witterf, possibly for tactical reasons. But Stalin intervened and had Thalmann reinstated, signaling the beginning of a purge and completing the Stalinization of the KPD. Topic. KPD versus SPD At the 12th Party Congress of the KPD in June 1929 in Berlin Wedding, Thalmann adopted a policy of confrontation with the SPD. This followed the events of Bloody May, in which 32 people were killed by the police in an attempt to suppress demonstrations which had been banned by the Interior Minister, Karl Severing, a Social Democrat. During that time, Thalmann and the KPD fought the SPD as their main political enemy, acting according to the Comintern policy which declared Social Democrats to be social fascists. By 1927, Karl Kilbaum, the Comintern representative to Germany, had started to combat this ultra-leftist tendency of Thalmann within the German Communist Party, but found it to be impossible when he found Stalin was against him. Another aspect of this strategy was to attempt to win over the leftist elements of the Nazi Party, especially the SA, who largely came from a working-class background and supported socialist economic policies. These guidelines on social democracy as social fascism remained in force until 1935 when the Comintern officially endorsed a popular front of socialists, liberals and conservatives against the Nazi threat. By that time, Adolf Hitler had come to power and the KPD had largely been destroyed. In March 1932, Thalmann was once again a candidate for the German presidency, against the incumbent Paul von Hindenburg and Hitler. The KPD's slogan was, A vote for Hindenburg is a vote for Hitler, a vote for Hitler is a vote for war. Thalmann returned as a candidate in the second round of the election, as it was permitted by the German electoral law, but his vote count lessened from 4,983,000 in the first round, to 3,707,000 10.2%. 
After the Nazis came to power in January 1933, Thalmann proposed that the SPD and KPD should organize a general strike to topple Hitler, but this was not achieved. In February 1933, a Central Committee meeting of the already banned KPD took place in Konigs Wusterhausen at the Sporthaus Ziegenhals near Berlin, where Thalmann called for the violent overthrow of Hitler's government. Following the Reichstag fire, on 3 March he was arrested in Berlin by the police. Imprisonment and execution On the afternoon of 3 March 1933 Thalmann was arrested together with his personal secretary Werner Hirsch at the home of Hans and Martha Klusinski in Berlin-Charlottenburg The arrest was undertaken by eight officers of Police Station 121. This was preceded by a denunciation by Hermann Hillages, garden neighbor of the Klausinskis in Gatto. In the preceding days, at least four other people had also passed on their knowledge of the connection Klausinski Thalmann to the police. Thalmann had used the accommodation in Lutzo Street for several years occasionally, and then again in January 1933. Although it was not among the six illegal neighborhoods that the military political apparatus of the KPD had prepared for Thalmann, it was not considered known to the police. Thalmann had led a Politburo meeting in a bar in the Lichtenberg Gudrunstrasse on 27 February. On his way back he was informed by communist functionaries about the Reichstag fire, and the sudden onset of mass arrests. After the German-Soviet non-aggression pact and Germany's invasion of Poland of 1939, and despite Thalmann's loyalty to Stalin during his time leading the KPD, Moscow pragmatically removed a slogan for the 1939 International Youth Day which read in part. Long live Comrade Thalman. It was replaced with what read in part, Long live the wise foreign policy of the Soviet Union, guided by Comrade Stalin's instructions. Thalman spent over 11 years in solitary confinement. In August 1944, he was transferred from Bautzen Prison to Buchenwald Concentration Camp, where he was shot on 18 August. His body was immediately cremated. Shortly after, the Nazis claimed in an announcement that, together with Rudolf Breitscheid, Thalmann had died in an Allied bombing attack on 23 August. <inaudible> <inaudible> Legacy While heading the KPD, Thalmann closely aligned the German Communists with the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Supporters of a more autonomous course were expelled. During World War I and the Weimar Republic, the KPD competed for leadership of the working class with the more moderate Social Democratic Party of Germany SPD, particularly after the latter supported German involvement in the war. Thalmann and the KPD focused their attacks primarily on the SPD to prevent it from retaining power. During the Spanish Civil War, several units of German Republican volunteers most notably the Thalmann Battalion of the International Brigades were named in his honor. During World War II, Yugoslavia's leader Josip Broz Tito organized a company of Danube Swabians and Wehrmacht defectors as the Ernst Thalmann Company to fight the Nazis. In 1935, the former town of Ostheim in Ukraine was renamed Telmanov. After 1945, Thalmann, and other leading communists who had been killed, such as Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht, were widely honored in East Germany, with many schools, streets, factories, etc., named after them. Many of these names were changed after German reunification, but streets and squares named after Thalmann remain in Berlin, Hamburg, Greifswald and Frankfurt and Der Oder. The East German Pioneer Organization was named the Ernst Thalmann Pioneer Organization in his memory. Members pledged that, Ernst Thalmann is my role model. I promise to learn to work and fight struggle as Ernst Thalmann teaches. In the 1950s, an East German film in two parts, Ernst Thalmann, was produced. In 1972, Cuba named a small island, Cayo Ernesto Thalmann, after him. In Ho Chi Minh City, the secondary school THPT Ernst Thalmann Ten Low Man was named after him. The British communist composer and activist Cornelius Cardew named his Thalmann variations for piano in Thalmann's memory. The East German Weapons Factory was named after Thalmann, the VEB Ernst Thalmann Waffenfabrik. Topic: Writings, selection. 
Ernst Thalmann, der Kampf um die Gewerkschaftseinheit und die Deutsche Arbeiterklasse. Referat und Schluert auf dem Ten. Parteitag der KPD in German, Berlin, Vereinigung Internationaler Verlagsanstalten Ernst Thalmann, Wedding gegen Magdeburg Revolutionärer Befreiungskampf oder Kapitalistische Sklaverei in German, Berlin, Internationaler Arbeiter Verlag Ernst Thalmann, Katastrophe oder Sozialismus? Ernst Thalmann's Kampfruf gegen die Notverordnungen in German, Berlin, Internationaler Arbeiter Verlag Ernst Thalmann, Ernst Thalmann und die Jugendpolitik der KPD in German, Berlin, Verlag Junge Welt Ernst Thalmann, und Stalin. Brief aus dem Zuchthaus 1939 bis 1941 in German, Berlin, Karl Dietz Verlag, ISBN 3-320-01927-9